Hey people, what's going on? I'm the Broken Puppet and welcome back to my channel. Got a little fun one today. This is if you're starting out, it's to understand what kind of equipment you want to use to achieve your kind of drawing. Now all this here is primarily what I sort of use for basic sort of drawing and basic kind of sort of, you know, sort of sketching and stuff. Now, you got to understand there's lots of different types of sort of drawing. Um, for most drawings, all you need is a pencil, a rubber, and a sharpener. All the others are kind of extra, which you can use different things. So a compass is a really handy tool for doing like circles. Um, you can use our ruler for straight lines. If you want to achieve colors, um, I highly recommend these color pencils, sort of like, like Prisma color pencil. These are very, very good. Um, they're very bold. Uh, you find these are much better than standard color pencils. Unipin fine liners. You know, any kind of fine liner pen will do, but they're really handy if you're getting like bold lines. So if you want to do something like illustrations or like more kind of cartoony stuff or say sort of tattoo style, you know, sort of stuff like that, where it's got a nice outline, you know, they're very good to use. Sharpies are very nice to sketch. They're much bolder, you know, so if you're going just something a bit more kind of simple. Um, if you struggle doing like, you know, like, you know, clean, smooth lines, um, if you really struggle doing like a really thin line coming across, starting off with something a little bit bolder, sometimes it's a bit easier. You know, the bolder lines tend to be easier to pull nice, smooth lines to begin with. You know, so if you struggle with that, start off with this. Um, brush markers are very good for coloring in, you know, or using like for bold areas. Um, they tend to be much darker, much more sort of like um, uh, full than say pencils are. You probably see me use it a lot, it's my favorite kind of tool to use. Um, if you want to sort of like add color to designs, um, especially sort of from like sort of tattoos kind of perspective, stuff like this, you know, uh, ink. Uh, this is our rolly sort of ink, um, it's acrylic ink. You know, but for basic sketching, all you need is any kind of pencil and a rubber. Now, most pencils, you'll find a little code on there. This one, as you can see down here, this one's got a 3B on it. Now, to understand pencils, you're going to have two codes. You're going to have a H and you're going to have a B. Now, H is basically a harder pencil, which basically means it's going to be lighter. And the higher the number, the, so the harder it's going to be, so the lighter the pencil is going to be. So if you had, say, a 2H, that's going to be much lighter than, say, a 2B is. The Bs tend to be darker, so as it gets to a higher B, it's going to get much darker. So depending on what you want to achieve, you understand that. Um, I highly recommend using something like a H to kind of sketch with. You know, if you're not too confident to begin with, because it makes it nice and light, and then you can use a B to kind of darken up areas. Obviously a sharpener, you want to keep your pencils nice and sharp. Unless you want to keep them down to a little bit blunt, sometimes it's nice easier to do sort of shading when the edge is a bit blunt. So see here, say this one. The, sharp, the edge on here is nice, quiet and sharp. Now if you're sort of shading with it, if you're doing it like this way, it's going to be kind of hard. You can use it from a side angle, but sometimes it's nice to have a pen that's a little bit more blunt, like this. You know, just wear it down a touch and you tend to find it goes a bit of a bolder line, which just makes it a bit easier for shading. So I'm going to move those out of the way. I'm going to start off just talking about some basic ideas of sketching and understanding how to sort of build up an image. And just going over a few sort of mistakes that a lot of people make, especially early on when you first start drawing. You know, so this is sort of a beginner's guide. So let's just understand some really sort of uh, simple basics. So what I've got here is some nice quality paper. Now this is Bristol board paper. You know, any nice paper would do. You just, you basically just want to avoid printer paper. You know, you just don't want, you know, the really basic thin kind of paper. You know, you just get yourself a nice sketch, but they're not expensive. You know, but something like this is really good. You know, it's not overly expensive and it's really nice to draw on. So what I'm going to start off with, yeah, but it's the basic principle of sketching. Now when a lot of people start getting into art, you know, the first thing I want to do, they want to sort of try drawing, but what I want, what I want to do, they want to draw everything as it is from the get-go. And I'm going to show you why that's a basic mistake and just how to go about it. Like, say for instance, a circle. Now, if I try to draw a circle in just one kind of go, so if we kind of go, see like this. It's not very perfect, you know, it's not kind of sort edges that are a bit uneven. You know, this isn't a way to go. You know, the problem is if you're doing a whole design like this, everything's always going to kind of be a bit off, you know, because you haven't sort of built it up. You know, this basic principle helps you understand that. So we're going to do here, we're going to do sketching. So the idea is, I'm going to do little flick lines like this, you know, or kind of bring it around. So the idea is I'm just touching the paper very softly and I'm building up the shape. So rather than doing one big bold line like this to try and achieve that shape, I'm going to sketch this in. And I'm just going to keep going around in a circle, just sketching in lines. And as I keep doing this, the true sort of shape that I want to achieve is going to come through. So you can see, you can see how much better a circle this is in compared to this. And the idea is I've built up this shape. You know, rather than sort of going sort of, you know, committing straight to a perfect line, you've done this and this helps you build up and it helps you understand the basic principles of things. You know, because I say, you know, if you're trying to do this, you're having to sort of try to draw a perfect from the get go and it's almost impossible. No one can really do that. You know, it's just not going to work that way. You know, so starting off with this, the idea of sketching. So the idea is just bring up even little lines like this, just use like a very sort of soft motion, where I said, just repeating the shape. So if you're on a circle, just kind of repeating a very, very soft, like barely touching the paper, 
and just keep going around and you're fine like you know every now and again you're going to create the right kind of motion sometimes lines are going to be perfect but the actual general consistency is going to make the right shape that you want and once you've got the rough shape you can then commit to a better line if you want to like, so if you wanted to make a hard outline so if you wanted a hard outline like this from here you could then sort of try to make your perfect circle so you can sort of draw your line with it in next you kind of got a guideline to help you and now when you're sort of doing like that, I'm working sort of shading um, it's very, very important to understand some basic principles of how to shade smoothly and how to shade nicely um, and to achieve the kind of effect that you want. You know, sometimes rough shading is nice. Like you'll probably see in my work a lot of time I do sort of like um, rough sort of shading. Um, and by rough, I basically mean this. So if you imagine when you're doing lines like this, if you're coming across paper like this, you can see you've got all these kind of little gap bits in between. Now, these are good for certain styles, but for basic normal kind of sketching and for to achieve like a more realistic kind of feel, this is not the way to go. Because the problem is it's inconsistent. Now what you want to get is a nice consistency. So what you want to do is when you bring your lines across like this, just bring it across very gently. So just hold your pen very gently. Let's like, see, I'm, I'm keeping quite a bit of width on it. Now if you hold close like this, it's going to be very kind of hard. I tend to hold my pen back quite a bit further when I'm sort of doing this. So you want to bring this across like this, and you want to bring your lines very close together. Try to make it so there's no gaps. You know, because the tighter your shading is, the tighter your lines, as long as there's no gaps, you're going to get a much smoother shade. And you just want to keep coming back and as you come back here, we're going to go slowly softer and softer and softer until it basically fades into nothing. Because the idea is pressure. The softer you press it, the lighter the shading is going to be. So it's going to keep going across like this. Until we come to nothing. So you can see there, we have this nice, perfect kind of smooth blend that comes out. That's where if we've done the other shade next to it, you know, like what a lot of people sort of tend to do, you know, when you kind of like this. And then sometimes they try going over it again to sort of try and do it. And then again, and then again. And you can see you kind of get gappy bits, it's in between, you know, it's not smooth. Now this is much, much better. And all you've done for this was, as I said, just got a nice consistency, just keeping those lines nice and next to each other. You know, just every time you do it, you know, it's all about kind of muscle memory. So you basically want to keep this kind of motion going. And now each time you do it, just kind of keep it on the paper and just try and keep that line next to it. You know, it will take a bit of practice, but in time you're about to achieve that. You're about to achieve a perfect smooth blend. And once you sort of achieve this kind of effect, you can then start applying this to your drawings. And now to, to apply to your drawings, you need to have a little bit of understanding of light. And now light is a bit of a complex one to understand um, if you haven't kind of been taught a little bit about it. So take this circle, for instance. We're gonna start off with this circle just here. So the basic kind of principle that you would sort of think, right? You know, so you have like light on one side, dark on the other. So if we sort of add light on the center, you imagine like you have light on this side and dark on this side. So this would be, the light side and this would be the dark side now the problem is shapes are a bit more kind of complex than this and light is a bit more complex um, not so complex where it's hard to understand but here's a really basic way of understanding it so we have the shape here and the idea is this is light because the light source is coming from over here so imagine this is a light bulb or the sun or something like that and the idea is this shape is coming down at it so if we have our circle shape this is going to come from here coming this way and this is going to come to that edge so you understand the light is hitting it here and here and because it's hitting it here this is this means this is the dark side and this is the light side but the problem is it's not just that because as the light comes around here you also get what's called reflect or reflective light so wherever the surface is let's say we have a surface say the bottom here so let's bring this little line just understand here just as a basic guideline So say this was the floor. This, say, ball is sitting on this surface. Now, as this light comes down, it comes down, but light also bounces off of surfaces. So as it comes down here, it's gonna bounce, and it's gonna hit these areas underneath here. So again, it's gonna come here, it's gonna hit this floor, and it's gonna kinda bounce underneath and hit these areas. So you're gonna get these areas that are called reflective lighting. So the idea is, where this bounces, you're then gonna get a slight lighter tone on these kind of areas. You know, and the problem is, when, so when most people sort of draw, draw, the basic principle that most people sort of generally do is dark here, like pure dark, and light across. You know, which can make sense sometimes if service dark surface where you don't get reflective light, but nine times out of ten, you're going to have some sort of source of uh, refle uh, reflective light. Now, the easy way to do this, when you have this, you know, bring your line across, so you sort of here, this is where the sort of center point. So the idea is this half's getting light and this part isn't. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this as our main sort of point. This is going to be the core shadow. So we're going to have this in the center, and what we're going to do is going to bring a shadow across this. Coming like this. 
across like this to this side. So you have this core shadow that's going to come through a little bit. It's going to be a bit more thicker on the sides because of what it is. So the idea is the darkest part is going to be here. So once we have this, what we're going to do then is bring in a lighter shade underneath, filling up that bottom area like this. Remember to keep your shading nice and close if you can so you don't get too many kind of gap bits in between. So you see, we've got this darker shadow here, we've got this light part here. And then what I'm going to do, because the light is strongest at this center point, and as it gets to the side here, it's going to slightly weaken out. So what I'm going to do is bring up a little bit of shadow just here, just coming around the side edge. And this one just coming up the side edge. So it's understanding where the strong points are and where the weak points are. You know, this bit here is lighter because I said, because you got the reflective light that comes underneath. So this lightens this upper touch. You know, the darkest point is going to be through the center. You got this little bit here. So we're going to bring that sort of across there. I'm going to bring a little bit of shadow just across here so we can sort of show where the highlight's going to be as well. Because generally, especially on uh, circular areas, you know, you don't necessarily get it when it's um, a box area, but on the circular areas, you're always going to get what's called a highlight area. So we're going to get to that, but what I'm going to do now, and now we've got this, I'm just going to bring this across, and I'm going to blend in these shadows. So I'm going to creep kind of shadow across, just mixing these together. Keep my shading nice and smooth. Like so. So, so you've got the stock area through the center, the lighter area on here. And where it comes down, you're going to get a highlight. Now, because the way the light's coming down from this angle, the highlight area is going to be in this sort of section. And then it's basically because this is the area that's going to reflect it off. So if you imagine, you know, it's not going to be lights on the top. You can put a little light area there, but the idea is the light's going to come down. And when you see in this area, the light is then sort of pinging off and it's pinging towards you. So the idea is this is that transition. So that's why it's there rather than up here. That's why you kind of get that, because it's where the light bounces towards you. And that's what creates the highlight area. So now we have that, you can darken up areas again and just kind of bring it in sort of cross. Now once you've kind of got sort of, you know, sort of everything kind of roughly where you want it, you can then start to determine if there's areas that you want to sort of make darker, which you generally want to do, you know, the better contrast, the better it is. And now, because if you have a picture that doesn't have the full range of tone, it's not going to look quite as realistic. And by that, what I mean is at some point in this picture, you want to make sure it has pure black to pure white, you know, because a realistic image has the whole range. So if you imagine this is a range, you have pure black over here, to pure white over here. So if you have all of that, you have this kind of range. This is what I call the realistic range. So if you imagine if it has all of these, the picture work is going to look, you know, look realistic. If you're using a much smaller one, say if you're only going to go into a light gray and you're only going to like a certain kind of like mid-tone kind of light dark, you're only using this kind of tone. So only using half of what I call the realistic kind of spectrum. So you're not going to have the full range of tone that's going to make the image look right. So what you want to do is maybe start off with this, you know, start sketching in this kind of area. So you have this kind of lighter shade, to this lighter dark shade. And then once you're kind of confident that your image is better, just slowly keep expanding it, going darker and making your areas lighter until you have the full range. And once you have the full range, you make it look much more better, much more realistic. So see, I'm gonna go around here now, I'm gonna start making this much darker around this area. Come here, start for our center. As it gets this, I'm going to make it much darker. And once we've got that, I'm going to start blending it out and then I'm going to start making the highlight a bit more obvious. So what I'm going to do is bring a bit more contrast and make this highlight stand out a lot more. So you see how I'm widening in that I'm widening the tone range now. So you see it's getting darker, which is making it more sort of seems, it seems, I mean, obviously it's not completely realistic, but you can see what I mean by the, um, the realistic elements. As you make it darker, it starts to make it appear more round, which makes it look much more what it's supposed to be. So it's gonna keep bringing that round, just section by section. So we have this roughly filling up that rough area. 
And once we have that, I've got a little bit of shadow in there. So what I'm going to do is now get some more rubber. It's going to raise that little highlight area we have just there. Just bring a little bit of shadow just around it, just to kind of show it off. And you have that, so you have the idea of this sort of circle. So you can see the shadow kind of exists in these kinds of areas. You know, so when you kind of get an understanding of how shadow how shadow and light works, you can start improving. Because I said, you know, the problem with like a lot of people now, when you first start off, you know, without being taught to, a lot of people just want to go dark to pure light. So if you had a circle like this, you know, a lot of the initial interpretation would be just to kind of go dark from the bottom. Come light across. Dark from the bottom. Coming across. Which I said, you know, can sometimes, you know, be the right way if you have, say, a dark surface. Because obviously, if you have a dark surface, you're not going to get what's called reflective light. So if this was on a very dark surface, the light wouldn't be bouncing. The light bounces off of areas that are white and light. Um, and generally, you find most areas have some form of white. If there's any area with a color in, it basically has, a, you know, some area of white in it. So it's going to have some sort of reflectiveness. That's why when you see, like, a face and you get a sort of dynamic shadows, a lot of times you sort of see it be a dark area, in area uh, dark in one area. And like another and sometimes it's dark in areas that you wouldn't expect because when you're trying to understand it, you sort of just doesn't make sense. But when you understand reflective light, you understand why it does in those areas. And once you have the basic principle of shape, you know, especially circles, you know, in my opinion, circles is the most important, especially if you're realistic. You basically start to put out and understand that everything is made up of shapes. You know, like here, you know, if you imagine like say a nose or a face or anything like that, everything has got basic kind of principles of shapes. You know, so if you had a face, like say, or say like a nose. A nose I'll draw it down here. So you had like a nose coming this way, this way, the nostrils, and there, like this. This basic principle, this shape, is built up of other shapes. You know, you, you see them a lot of time when I sort of draw it. So imagine on the tip of this nose, you could have a circle. For the nostrils, it could be another circle. Up here, it could be like a, a long oval shape. Like so. You know, this could go into a little part of the center of the face, you know, it sort of dips in, you know, this part here can curve down. And once you understand these kind of shapes, and you understand you can apply this sort of shading, say, to these, and if you just apply this sort of shading principle into these sort of things, you know, make sure it makes sense with the kind of light sort of tones, you can then build up the correct kind of shadows that you need to get that. You know, I understand that sometimes it's not quite as simple as that. Like sometimes, saying the nose, you might get like a little bit of an indent that kind of goes here, which bends inwards. You know, but once you sort of like to understand the circle, you, just, you start to understand these kind of bends and stuff. And once you understand these bends, you're going to apply it to your shading to make things much more realistic and just get a better principle, a better understanding of it. And now when you're first starting out, don't beat yourself up. You know, don't expect everything to come out perfect from the get-go. Especially if you're, if you're a newbie, if you're just starting out, you know, it's going to take practice. Your art is, well, you know, years and years of practice. It's always going to be learning. You know, I've been drawing my whole life, you know, a better part of 30 years. And I still learn stuff now. You're always going to be a learning process. The key thing is to enjoy it, not beat yourself up, and understand that no one's going to be perfect. Okay, you know, and it shouldn't be about perfect, you know, basically always try to build up your understanding and try to learn, but don't beat yourself up not the way away, because sometimes, you know, the best, the best artists in the world are ones to make things that they're imperfect, kind of break the rules. You know, as I said, you know, learn from these sort of things, you know, but the primary thing when it comes to art is just make sure that you are enjoying it, okay? You know, very, very important. You can use your finger as well to smudge it. You can also use little smudging tools. Um, I have one mine somewhere, but I can't find it. It's like a little kind of paper roll pencil. Uh, they're very good for shading. But I hope this is going to be a, bit, a, little bit, a better sort of understanding of basic sort of shadows. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some more videos on other sort of things. So show how to use markers, how to use uh, pens, paints. Um, understanding the right principles of how to build up sort of images. Um, certain kind of shapes and dynamics. Like we'll talk through that face in much more detail. And how to kind of build these shapes up and how to apply these kind of shadows into stuff like this. Um, I'd also leave quite a few more big, uh, beginner ones, just kind of really kind of basic, simple stuff, just to help you guys kind of get started out if you're kind of new to it. But for now, yeah, this one's all about sort of basic kind of shading, basic equipment. Like I said, you know, to draw, all you need is a pencil, a rubber, and a sharpener. You know, you know, everything else is nice. You know, equipment. You know, it's nice extra, but you don't need anything special to be able to draw a picture. You know, all you need is paper, pencil, rubber, and sharpener. You know, so it's how 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 about that? Getting tongue tied. I hope that's helped you guys. Um, yeah, if there's anything specific you kind of struggle with, you know, it's a basic kind of principles. Let me know what it is, and I'll try and get a video to go on today. You know, I'm going to go through ones like composition and stuff like that as well. But yeah, if there's anything specific you guys struggle with, just let me know, and I'll try and get something done for you guys as well. 
But for now, people, I'm Lee Broken Puppet, and I'll see you next time. Peace.